Hello there. Now, welcome back to Let's Talk Sports. This is my first podcast on the channel. Now, before we start, please like and subscribe to the page and share it if you can. Now, first up, I'm going to talk about the West Ham game. Now, pivotal game against Norwich which could play a key part in their in West Ham's future in the Premier League. Now I went into this thinking they'd win admittedly biased as a West Ham fan but with my surprise they come through with flying colours. I have to say, I didn't expect them to win it this well, despite Norwich's poor form. And let's be honest, as the season goes on, they've looked less and less convincing. Now, the star of the show, as if you just glance at the statistics, was Antonio. I have to say, I feel he has been one of the few bright spots since the restart. He's not the most technically gifted, but he shows plenty of endeavour, and that's what West Ham fans love to see, and he thoroughly deserved his four goals. Never stopped running always there for the cause and his goals were all very different really deserved his first professional hat trick now he wasn't the only one what brought his A game I have to say I thought Bowen was fantastic from balls in all day and Sir Czech and Bryce and Noble shored up the midfield with passes and particularly Sir Czech, he, with having Noble back there, it gave him a license to roam free and be a threat inside the box, which is what Antonio needed, a bit of support, which leaves Bowen outright to do what he does and also on the other side for Nails who has had a rough first season but I think he's shown during the restart and I would argue just before the restart why West Ham looked at him in the first place it takes time to adapt to the Premiership and he's showing that he is worthy of playing in the league. Now, as I talked into one of my videos about the Newcastle game, the fullback position is one of the weakest for West Ham. But I feel Freshwell had probably his best game in a long time. To be fair, both full-backs uh, had a better game, but he was getting bombing forward and getting quality balls into the box. So, where I'll give them stick, I'm not going, even though I feel like they're not the answer, I'm not going to give praise where it's due. Now, Another uh, big factor in the game was Abona. He was rock solid at the back, um, being one of the consistent performers for West Ham this season. And let's be honest, probably the only one that rivals Rice for player of the season. So a true performance of leadership 
and class at the back. Now, let's hope that they can continue that form going in the next game against Watford. Now, that brings me to my next point. We had the highs of Saturday for West Ham, then we rolled over to Sunday, and I truly did feel after the game on Saturday that with a good performance on Wednesday, then they would potentially be safe. But then we get to Sunday, and I thought Bournemouth and Aston Villa were both dead certs to lose. But oh no, they both win and Aston Villa win conventionally. I know a lot of fans are going to say, well, what about the Saka goal? But let's be honest, whereas it would have changed the game, Aston Villa was well worth the win. So there was that. And then the West Ham fans was thinking, yeah, but Luke Bournemouth, they're not going to beat Leicester, but what do they do? It was going all so well at half time. One nil down with Bournemouth and looking out of it, Rogers takes off his striker and then Smichael who's been dependable and rock solid for years has a mare and they concede the goal and then they go to pieces. And Dominic Salaki goes from looking like he can't hit the back end of a bus and uh, you see why he hasn't scored in 38 games. Then he's suddenly beginning to look like Mbappe up there, terrorising the Leicester defences. So that was really a kick in the teeth for the West Ham fans because it undoes the good work of Saturday and the most dangerous thing is it raises the spirits of both the sides. So this really is looking like it could go into the last day for West Ham. I'm still confident they'll stay up. But I think they'll stay up because the sides below them are worse, not based on talent. Now, just although I've touched on it, just touching on the Leicester game, really does look like Leicester are going to pieces, buckling under the pressure. They was faltering after Christmas before the break because of the coronavirus then at restart they've looked even worse they've never really looked like they wanted to play or their heart was in it and you thought when they finally did get their first win oh maybe they're back and they'll grind out some results but oh no, they're looking like they'll continue faltering and Manchester United and Chelsea will be deservedly in the Champions League places. But we will see. Now, it brings us to Chelsea. Let's, what can we say about them? They've looked like a team on form confident since the restart then they have Sheffield United the team what's done okay since the restart but not showed the same endeavour they did pre-restart but they get schooled in this one Chelsea never really looked like they was going to get anything out of the game. I would argue they could have played for five hours and not 
scored. They didn't look like they wanted it at all. The defence that's patchy. You, I understand why Chelsea are making reinforcements in their attack, but that's again back to the defence. The goalkeeper does not convince you at all. And the centre backs are awful. They don't have a left back. And Frank Lampard made it clear after the game that he will not forget this. That's sending a clear message to the players that he will get rid of them this year. I am of the belief he will get rid of Jorginho. And I think all of the centre-backs could be on borrowed time. And Emerson and Alonso are gone. I mentioned this in my summing up of the young guns, but... I think James is so overrated and this game did everything to prove that point defensively. He doesn't cover anything and in attack he doesn't offer any substance and is all hot air. I really am not convinced by him and I don't believe he deserved a contract. They gave him what they just tied him to a long term deal. Now, for the last topic, we will talk a bit of NFL. Patrick Mahomes just signed to a long term deal, bigger sport contract in sports history, a 10 year deal. Very deserved, brought the Super Bowl to Kansas City and I feel he left loads of money on the table. I think if he played it out he could have got double the money he did. So we shall see what this means for the likes of Prescott at the Cowboys and indeed Lamar Jackson at Baltimore. He will definitely be looking at the contract and wanting at least that. So we will see how this affects the other contracts in the league. Thank you for listening to my first podcast. And please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. You've been listening to Let's Talk Sports.